Euro Pride canceled in Serbia after horrific Christian backlash. Due to opposition from right-wing groups, the Serbian government recently announced that Europe that the Euro Pride parade would be essentially banned. The parade was scheduled to take place on September 17th in the capital city of Belgrade. Bishop uh, Nikanur of Banat urged the Orthodox groups in the country to help stop the ones who were, quote, desecrating the holy city of Belgrade. In a YouTube video, Nikanor said, okay, YouTube, I am reporting the statements of other people. These are not our views, and we condemn these views. I am reporting this for educational purposes. Okay. Nikanor said, quote, I will curse all those who organize and participate in something like that. He added, I can do that much. If I had a weapon, I would use it. I would use that force only if I had it, but I do not. Thousands of Serbian Orthodox Church members and traditionalists, extreme right-wing groups, gathered to protest to, to counter Euro Pride. The church's clergy has tried to bar many Pride walks and even blessed the violent counter demonstrations. In response, the Serbian government announced that the Pride celebration would be canceled or postponed. President President Aleksandar. Uh, Lusik said, with the rising tensions and concerns with the former province of Kosovo, Serbia is, quote, pressured with all kinds of problems and that it is impossible to, quote, handle everything, referring to their inability to provide adequate security for the Pride March. Yeah, read this by Darko. Darko is saying, the people that were ready to walk those streets are so effing brave. Yeah, so if you do not are not familiar with the history of Pride in Serbia, which I don't expect many people would be, the first Pride in Serbia was in around 2001 to 2003. And the people who participated in that Pride march were violently physically assaulted. And then they basically didn't have another one for almost another 10 years. And then the next time it happened, again, there were violent assaults. And then since 2014, there has been pride marches under heavy police security every year. Now, Euro Pride, for those who don't know, is like a pan-European pride festival. So it's supposed to be like the LGBT community of Europe comes from across Europe to then go celebrate pride in a specific country. Serbia was chosen to be the location for this year's pride three years ago. And then political things have happened since then, which basically made it completely untenable. Like I said, thousands flooded the streets to counter protest the Euro pride happening in Serbia, even after the government announced it was essentially banned. And there's been extreme violent rhetoric against the community happening from some of the highest pulpits in the Serbian Orthodox Church and not condemned by the, the main patriarch. And um, basically, yeah, it is it is a real reminder about what pride is actually about for many people in Western, quote unquote, free societies. Um, pride has become so commercialized mm -hmm. that we forget that our legacy of when our political ancestors had to put their bodies on the line against police brutality for their individual liberties, because that what that's what LGBT rights are about. Really, it should be framed as a fight for individual liberty, individual rights. So when people are putting their bodies on the line for the sake of trying to secure their individual liberties, like we for what what they had to do in America 50 years ago a little over 50 years ago, people still have to do to this day. And we don't shed enough light on them, in my opinion. Um, so that's part of why I wanted to talk about this. And also just the blatant like incitement to violence, um, the, the severe homophobia. But I did want to give an update because we released this news a few days ago. But like I said, it was supposed to happen on the 17th, which was yesterday. Armin, if you go into the show notes, I found a video of what actually happened yesterday about how it this actually one? went down. Yes. So if you click in the middle of this image, it's actually a video. Um, if you're sharing audio, we can give an update of how things actually went down. 
Tell me if you have an idea when it's suspect. Yes. Europride organizers have proposed a new route for their march in Belgrade. After Serbia banned the LGBTQ rights demonstration earlier this week. They have also collected around 30,000 signatures for a petition, calling on the government to lift the ban. Organizers say that the new route, which is shorter than the original march, is a major compromise. We tried on our part to do something. There is a red line, which is that it is impossible not to have a parade. That is very important. We discussed with the authorities the various options that exist, but no agreement could be reached. Over 29,000 people from 123 countries around the world have shown their solidarity with the LGBT plus community here in Belgrade by signing the petition that we handed in just now. Serbia's police originally oh claimed far-right anti-gay activists was the reason for banning the parade. The Balkan country has yet to legalize same-sex marriage, and nearly 60 percent of its LGBTQ plus community reported experiencing both emotional and physical abuse in 2020. The continent's top human rights body has called on Serbian authorities to allow the march to go ahead. It's amazing how you can tell the good and evil. Look at this. Look, hold on. Plus like, community signing. Police originally look at this. Take activist. Look at the, is these people. Which, <laughs> these people, like they, they look like fascists, and I don't because know. Like most, a lot of them are. <laughs> I know, and then then and then you go here, people that are celebrating love. Oh, anyway. The day after the president of Kyrgyzstan. Oops, skip to the Never next mind. segment. Yeah, yeah, but the, I, the, I know the, what you mean. Yeah. Also, this is like a pro-Russian thing. It seems like look at this tweet. It is. So the this super, you know, the, the basically the bishop that was like inciting violence against the community has come out basically supporting Putin, like calling him the the czar. He called Putin the the how do you say it? The czar, czar, the czar of the planet, and. They've aligned with Russia because of an anti-Western degeneracy narrative, essentially, in a preservation of their traditional values, which is right. highly predictable. So this is like, it's amazing because this is like ultra you know, or, uh, Orthodox Christians versus uh, gay pride. But it's, uh, at the same time, it's about pro-Russian elements within the country and pro-EU elements of the country. Because um, Silva was asking in the live chat, is Serbia in the EU? Serbia is an EU candidate, right? So it's one of the few countries that has, has been on a list to join the EU for a very long time, but it's really difficult for you to join the EU when you're on the list because you have to, your human, you know, your laws, your economy, a lot of things have to be in line with European standards, gay rights, right? Uh, for you to get all that in order before you yeah, go democracy. from candidate to actually a member, right? And I don't know, canceling pride doesn't seem to be a good way to uh, go from being a candidate to an actual member, right? Um, Even U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made a statement saying that they shouldn't go forward with the ban, that this should continue. There were 15 yeah. different um, members of the EU Parliament that said that they would they would go and march with them in solidarity to show that this should go forward and all these things. Um, and so there wasn't like Euro pride is supposed to be like a full festival, like a whole thing. Instead, they kind of just had this miniature, incredibly truncated march. It's amazing how many con European countries that are have anti EU values, you know, um, are in line with Russia, like they see like within Serbia, people who are against these stuff see Russia as their big brother, savior, coming, come save us from liberals and kind of daddy Putin, come save us from all this degeneracy kind of stuff, right? That's their attitude. They think Putin is the solution. Like all this LGBT stuff, family values, this is the dark force that is coming. And Putin is their white knight coming to save the, the bringer of light to fight against all this dark evil degeneracy, right? I mean, look at this tweet. Yesterday in Belgrade, a rally was held against Europride, the rally organized by pro-Russian groups. Uh, the Serbian Orthodox Church was actually more of a pro-Russian rally with Z symbols uh, or Z symbols uh, and Russian flags. 
Is this what a candidate country for EU membership looks like? Very good question. By the way, a lot of these candidate countries for EU membership are also kind of would be annoyed if Ukraine gets to be a EU member before they do. Okay, because they're like, we were on this, we were on a waiting list for a while. How come they get to be ahead of us? I mean, they they probably won't. It will take a long time, but they do. But the thing is that if Ukraine gets ahead of these countries, it makes sense. There's more of a demand, like the people there, you know, they're not pro-Russian, okay? So they have a greater say, alignment of values. Perfect. I mean, you, the the things that are working against Ukraine is corruption, okay? They have a serious problem with corruption, and their economies is really bad, right? Like they have a GDP per capita of uh, five cents. Maybe. Well, Russia exactly. starting an invasion of their landmass in 2014 definitely impacted that a lot. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, we had uh, somebody celebrating their membership. Uh, it was something I don't remember celebrating five months of membership. Thank you. Something I don't remember saying. What's the colorful lights behind Susie? Um, it's just I don't know. Uh, this would be some sort of LED that um, Babak set up. Huh. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Engage an American with the $5 super chat is saying, if Putin's the bringer of light, doesn't that make him Lucifer, a.k.a. light bringer? Sure. <laughs> hey, don't. Hey, can you please not? I do not tolerate any blasphemy against Lucifer uh, here. Okay. This is like, please don't compare Lucifer to anybody evil. That's offensive. <laughs> Um, Brother asks a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Asian American. Thank you, thank you. Oh, this is important. Uh, Shariesh was asking for a link to the petition. What, you know? Okay, um, honestly, I did not find this petition. I'm sorry. Okay, the petitioners- The petition are that the guy in the, the video was referring to. Okay. So they should do better at making it clear where the petition is. It's their job. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, not you. I'm saying they're- like they're doing a bad job. They they're looking for people oh. to sign their petition. They sh wait. Do you think I was talking about you? I'm kidding. I was joking. <laughs> okay, okay. I was talking about them. I wouldn't blame you for that. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.